Children's Time with Ann from the Old Town United Methodist Church in West Portsmouth, Ohio. Uh, as we've told you before, we're having Sunday school online because we can't have it at church right now because of the coronavirus. And so each week we pick a verse or a few verses that we want you to learn from the Bible or that, you, that we want to teach you what they mean and why they're important to you. And so this week we're going to focus first on the verse from 1 Chronicles 16.34. It comes from the Old Testament. It's about giving thanks. And it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Now, some kids may not know what endures means. Endures means to last. So that means that God's love is going to last forever. It's going to just keep on going and going and going. And this week, the story the, that we've chosen is actually a true story. It's about the pilgrims that came from... England and came to our country 400 years ago. Actually, 400 years ago this year. It, they came in 1620, and this is 2020, so that's 400 years ago. And uh, they dressed a little different than we do because that was the styles back then. And when you see pictures of people with the white collars and the things like that, that's, that's what the pilgrims dressed like. And we, uh, they didn't call themselves pilgrims. We call them pilgrims because people that go on a journey for a uh, purpose to get to know God or to, uh, to learn about, about him, we call them pilgrims. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what happened with them. They lived in England. I'm going to go over to the map here. And the map, this map is a little bit too small for you to see. So we outlined this area in the map right here. This is where we live, over in here. And they were over here. So we blew that part up so that you could see. They lived in England, and they wanted to worship God as they wanted to. They knew that God had sent his son Jesus to die for them, and they believed that he was their Savior, and they wanted to worship him and pray to him and have their church like they wanted to have it. But the king had a rule that... He, uh, they had to worship in his church the way he wanted them to, and they could be arrested if they did it differently, and they weren't happy with that. So they left England, and they went across this little uh, piece of the ocean there, a little, little inlet, not ocean, a little water, and they went over to another country called Holland, or the Netherlands, we call it today, and they lived there for a while. They lived there for years, and they moved from several different towns there, and they were happy there to a point, but the problem was that they were very poor there. And since they came from another place, they didn't have family there or anything, and they didn't have any way to make a lot of money, and they were going to be poor until they were old. And their children were learning the ways of the Dutch people who lived there in Holland. And the pilgrims wanted them to uh, stay true to their ways of life. And so they decided that they were going to go from there and they were going to get on a boat and go to America. And they had to go all the way across the sea like that. And so what they did is they had to get a sponsor because it was very expensive to do that. And then they had to promise that part of the things they found in the New World, which they call this area where we live now, they would have to give them and send them back to England at some time in order for them to make it. So it was very, very hard, and so they, but they finally got permission, and so they, they were used to worshiping like they wanted to, and so they did. They got on the ship, and there were two ships. One was the Speedwell, and one was the Mayflower. And when they left Holland, the Speedwell kept leaking. So when they finally got to England, they had to cram everybody on one ship, and they weren't supposed to have that many people on one boat, but they had, they had 102 passengers and then some sailors. And they traveled all the way across the ocean in a tiny little boat that wasn't very big at all. Probably wasn't much bigger than what your living room is. Maybe, maybe a little bigger, but not much. Um, I actually got to go to Plymouth Plantation in Massachusetts one time, and they have a they have a model, um, not a model, a replica. It's an exact built size of the ship that's called the Mayflower, and you could see how small it was. And when we were on there, I counted the people on there when we were there, and there were. There were about 70 people on board when I was on board, and it was so crowded. I thought, how could they have 102 passengers and make it? But they did. But by the time they got to the New World, 
They were very tired. Some of them were sick. They were hungry. Two of them died on the voyage, just two, which is amazing. And they landed. Actually, they came to the country and saw the land and tried to scout it out. And they couldn't land on the land for another month. So by the time they landed, it was November. And you know it gets cold in November. It's November right now. And it's starting to get cold outside. And uh, they still had some supplies left. And so they came ashore and they found a, a place that had been settled before. There were no houses, like in the picture it shows a house. But they built houses and they had to hunt for their food. They could hunt deer and turkey and they could fish and did some stuff like that to catch their meat. And they had a few dried, dried vegetables and fruits left. And, but it got really cold that winter. And that winter, about 40 of them died. So almost half of the pilgrims died that first winter. And they, but they still were so grateful that they were in our country and that they over here and that they were free to worship God as they wanted to. And they kept giving God thanks that he had let them get there. And so what they did is they, they just knew that they were going to make it and they prayed that God would help them. Well, in the spring, what happened is an Indian walked into their camp and the Indian's name was Samoset. He was from way up north from there. And he came in and they, the pilgrims, accepted him, let him come in and talk to him. And he spoke English. They were very surprised about that. And he was talking to the chief of the Indians that lived near there. And they said that those Indians had had a hard time too because a lot of them had died because of a plague. Uh, that's kind of like a pandemic like we're going through now. And they didn't know anything about germs back then, so they didn't even know what would spread it. And uh, they didn't know about washing their hands and masks and all that stuff. They didn't know all that. But anyway, a lot of the Indians had died. And, uh, and so Massasoit had watched them to see how, how they were doing, and the Indians needed help too. So eventually what happened was Samoset came back with another Indian named Squanto, who had actually been to England and had been able to come back home. And when he got back home, everyone in his village was gone. But he was living at Chief Massasoit's village. And uh, they helped each other. The Indians told the pilgrims how to do the crops because the planting the crops in, in the New World, which they called it in America, was different than planting the crops over, over where they had come from. And so they all worked together and they, they uh, got along and they were very thankful to God. They kept, they kept thanking God. And one of the other verses that I wanted to talk about today is that whatever you do, you work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. And that means that you work very hard and anything you do, you're doing for God. And the, the pilgrims believed that. They, they worked really hard. They knew the Bible and they knew it was important to work and they all worked together. And uh, so at the end of 1621, probably around August or September, they had had such a good harvest and good crops and they'd been able to hunt and have a lot of meat and they had dried that meat to save it through the winter and the Indians were helping and they were putting things together for each other and they all got together and had a big feast and they called it a harvest festival. And they didn't call it Thanksgiving, but they did a lot of Thanksgiving there. They did thank the Lord. And the, the purpose for the feast was to thank God for all the things that he had given them. And at some point in our country's history, we made Thanksgiving a national holiday. And we do call it Thanksgiving. And so we kind of carried some of the traditions along that the pilgrims did. One of them is thanking God for what he's given us. And the other one is eating a lot. That's why at Thanksgiving you have a lot of big feasts. And I've heard people say there were no turkeys at Thanksgiving. Well, the turkeys like we know now are domesticated turkeys. And so we didn't have domesticated turkeys back then. But there were wild turkeys, so they probably did have some turkeys. But probably the main meat they had was fish and deer meat. But they, they played games that lasted for several days, and it was a wonderful time. So now in our country, in the United States, we celebrate Thanksgiving every November, and we're getting ready to do that soon. And so what we're going to do today for art is we're going to do something for Thanksgiving. So 
we'll get ready for that. For art today, we're going to be doing something for your Thanksgiving dinner. And before we get to that, I want to show you this verse again. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. That's what the pilgrims did. They worked very hard and all the time. And they didn't waste anything. And one of the things that would happen is if their clothes wore out, they would... They, had, they would cut them and use them as patches for other clothes. They, you couldn't just throw your, if, if your sleeve had a big hole in it, you couldn't just throw your jacket away and go get a new one. You had to patch it. So they had patches. They made patches and they put them on their clothing and stuff. And so what they ended up doing is they used everything. And they would end up making different, different blankets. And they used patterns. They got real creative with their patterns. And one of the things they did is they took their little patches and they would put them together, and then they would make blankets out of them, and they called them uh, quilts. And this is a nine-patch quilt block. We don't know for sure if the pilgrims had nine-patch quilt blocks or not, but we do know that they saved things and they didn't waste anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to use kind of like a quilt piece, and we're going to make placemats for your Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do to start. You're going to need, you'll, you'll find what you need on the, you probably already saw that when you turned it on. But anyway, you're going to need two pieces of paper. You can use white paper, or you can use colored paper, or you can use pretty computer paper that's got a border or something on it. It's up to you. But what you're going to do is you're going to take the two pieces of paper, and you're going to put them down. You're going to overlap them just a little bit, just barely. And you're going to take a piece of tape, you're going to tape them together. And it's better to do that on the back so that you can color on the other side. Just tape them together, and then you turn them over, and we'll set that aside, because that's our placemat. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to do the quilt pieces. This is kind of what we're going to do. We're going to make a nine-patch quilt block, and we're going to write what we're thankful for on that. So what you need to do is you take two different colors of paper. doesn't matter what color. You take your ruler. This is kind of a lesson on measuring. So if you, if you have trouble with this, you can get a grown-up to help you. When you measure something, you put the end of the ruler toward where the numbers, where the one is. You just line it up at the edge. We're going to count by twos. We're going to go over to the two and we're going to make a mark and then go to two, four, six, eight, ten. And then we're going to go down and do it again. Line it up at the edge, two, four, six, eight, ten. This is the best way to draw a straight line. Then you put your ruler between those two marks and you draw a line down through there. Hold your ruler pretty tight and you'll have a straight line. This is kind of hard if you're really little. If you're older, you've probably done this in school. But it still is a little hard. Sometimes even grown-ups have trouble getting it lined up right. But I think if you just marked it and do like that, you'll be okay. And then you turn it. Now, I'm not going to cut it all. I'm going to show you how to measure it, though. Then you turn it and do it this way. You did that long ways. Now you're going to do it sideways. You're going to line it up, two, four, six, eight, and then go down a little bit more and do two, four, six, eight. Now this is if you want two inch blocks, which I do. You can also fold your paper and fold it again, fold it again, fold it again, and then cut the folds. Sometimes that's, that's easy but I think this is probably the easiest way. And then you just draw the lines. Now, I'm just gonna cut a little bit to show you because I've already got some cut out. And I'm gonna use the ones I've cut out in a minute. But this is the way you do it. You put the two pieces together so you don't have to mark both pieces. See, I got the yellow on the back and the orange on the front. And you don't have to use yellow and orange. Take a pair of scissors, be careful. You don't wanna cut yourself. You hold them together so that they don't slide, and then you cut, cut a strip, 
And you can cut them all if you want. I'm not going to cut them all. I'm only going to cut a few because I've already got some cut out and I don't want to take the time. It depends on how many placemats you're going to make, how many you need to cut. You can make one placemat, give it to the cook, or if you've got a special person coming, like your grandmother, or your uncle that you've not seen for a while, or you can give it to your little sister, or you can make one for everybody. It's up to you. Whoops. Anyway, I'm not going to cut any more. Anyway, there's your blocks. And what you do then is on your paper, I turned it to where, oops, there you go. Here's your paper. And what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the, whichever color you want in the middle, and I'm just going to start with orange. You can either use your glue stick and put on the back of it, or you can just use your glue. If you use your glue, you just need one dot, one little dot, because you don't need tons of glue. It'll be really messy if you've got a lot of glue. It dries really fast. And then what you do is underneath it, you take the other color and put one right underneath it, right in the center. And then you take the first color again, put a dot on the back, put it right underneath it. Then what you do is you take the opposite color, you just, it's like a checkerboard. You make it like a checkerboard. The opposite color, put it next to it, and then put this one next to it, put this one next to that, put this one next to that. And remember, you're making a nine patch quilt block to remind yourself that the Pilgrims didn't waste anything. Let's see, I said I wasn't going to cut it, but I don't have one that color, so I am going to cut it again. There we go. They didn't waste anything, and they were very careful, and they loved God, and they were very thankful. Now, here's where the thankful part comes in. What you're going to do now is at the top, you're going to write, ah, I got it stuck. I am thankful for. Can you, if I put it over here, can you see that? Yeah, I'll do that right there. I am thankful for. That way you can see how to write it. And you'll do it like this. I am thankful for across the top or across the bottom, wherever you want to write it. And then on each block, you're going to write what you're thankful for. Like you would say, I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for my friend. I'm thankful for church. Here's one that I did already. You can decorate it any way you want. And I even put, I even put like a little border. I even put some little pieces. I folded these and cut them again to make little bitty squares. And then I put Happy Thanksgiving, and I said I'm thankful for my cat, I'm thankful for the pilgrims and the lessons they taught, and I had something written in each block that I was thankful for. So I'm just going to let you decide. You can also do it with colored paper, and if you do crayons, it'll still color on that. Okay, so I'm going to show you now what to do with that at the table. You put it down on the table, and if you have different people coming and you want to do more than one, you can make more than one. If you want to save this, you just take a piece of wax paper and tear it out and put it over the top of it, and you can still see through it, but if the food gets spilled from your plate, it's not going to ruin your placemat. You can save it again for next year. Okay, and this is what you're going to do. My aunt will be real proud of me for doing this. When you set the table, you put a plate on it. And then what you do is, this is the way you do the silverware. You take the knife and you turn the blade inside. This is the proper way to set a Thanksgiving table. And then you put the spoon and you line it up at the bottom. And then on the other side, you put the fork. If you're gonna have a salad fork, you put it next. And if you're gonna eat a salad, you put the salad bowl right above the forks. We don't have any glasses, I'm sorry, Ann Ann. Well, we had styrofoam cups here at church. If you're going to have water glass, you put it above the knife, and then whatever else you're drinking, like iced tea, you put it over here. If you're not going to have a water glass, you just put it above the knife. And, and for doing the napkin, to fold the napkin, there's lots of different ways to fold the napkin, but one of the most common ways is you fold it, and then you fold it over, and then to where it opens up is the 
proper place to put it on the top and then you put it right by the fork and there you have Thanksgiving table setting and I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving I hope you've enjoyed our lesson today and uh, make sure you look next week to see what you need because we're going to do a little different art next week so you'll need some different supplies but let's bow our head and have our prayer today Thank you, Lord, for the pilgrims and the, the lessons that they taught us. Thank you for your Bible and for the verses about Thanksgiving that remind us that we have so much to be thankful for. Thank you that we are free in our country to worship you as we want to. Thank you that those pilgrims were brave enough to come over here to make sure that we could do that. And Lord, I ask you to bless us, help us to always work hard, be with us throughout the coming holiday. In Jesus' name, amen.